Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video. Today, we're going to tackle what to do with logos when they're given to you. Now, I don't mean what to do with them as far as where to work with them in your show. I mean, how do you prepare them so they have a proper alpha channel and will work in a video environment? We're going to look at two scenarios. A logo given to you on a white background, like an ad slick or heaven forbid a business card that you had to scan, and a digital EPS or AI file. I'll show you how to work with them and add an alpha channel. Now, let's go ahead and start out here with a logo that's been scanned in, and you see here that this is over white. If I take the eyedropper tool and drag through, you'll notice a few things. Notice in the info palette there, in the color, we're seeing that this really isn't pure white. We're getting black values of 7% over here on the left, which means that that's a slight light colored gray, which is often the case when you're dealing with paper. And in order to create this perfectly, we need this to be a perfect white and then knock it out for the key. So let's go ahead over to the channels palette here and we're gonna duplicate this channel. We'll simply drag it on the new channel icon and it makes a copy. I could then press Command L for levels and you see here how we have the white of the paper. If I just pull that in, you'll see that the white of the paper goes to pure white. And that works pretty well. And if we pull this slider in, everything that used to be almost black snaps to black. Now that's working pretty well. If we want to double click here, we can actually label that alpha, although that's just for your usefulness. It doesn't actually do anything. And let's grab the paintbrush and make sure that black is selected. The easiest way to do that is to press D for default colors and then X to toggle. And that loads pure black and pure white. To get a larger paintbrush, we could press the right bracket key and it gets bigger. And what we just need to do here is any area that's not supposed to be see-through, like these white letters, need to be painted on. Now I can get a nice big brush if I want and that'll go much faster. And all we're doing here is quickly painting that in. Now, I've cleaned this logo up, but we're going to want to get out of grayscale mode. While you can build video graphics in grayscale mode, you'll have an easier time if you use RGB mode. We scanned this logo in grayscale mode because it didn't pick up any stray colors. But now that we have the transparency just about right, we can go ahead and convert back to the RGB color space. I'll go ahead and choose Image Mode RGB Color, and the document changes space. If we look at this now, you'll see we have an alpha channel. And to make it a little bit simpler, I'm just going to command click on a Mac or control click on a PC to load that. And you see that we get the active selection. Now, what we actually want here is this is selecting everything outside. And I want to reverse that. So I'll just say select inverse and it'll flip around. We've got what we need and we can go ahead, if we want to knock this out, we can go ahead and apply a layer mask. There it is. We'll make that a layer. Double click. And I'll click the Add Layer Mask button. And you'll see that we have the transparency grid. Now, the way that this is being built is as a normal alpha channel as opposed to reverse, where white is opaque and black is transparent. So if we go back to the Channels palette here and we click on this, we'll want to flip it around. A simple Command-I will do the trick. And there you have it. At this point, the logo is all set. You would just save this as a TIFF, a PICT, a PNG, although I'm not as big a fan of that format, and a PSD. Any of those will work and can embed transparency. All you have to do is choose File, Save As, and then specify a format that supports alpha channels. So if we chose TIFF, for example, we can go ahead and make sure the alpha channel box is checked, and we'll just save this logo out. Make sure you don't add any additional compression and be absolutely certain that you do not check the Save Transparency box. If you mark the Save Transparency box, it counteracts with the alpha channel you already have. So again, in the Save dialog, do not check Save Transparency and do not add compression. Simply choose to include the alpha channel that you've made. I'll click OK and the file will write to disk and it's all set to be dropped into any nonlinear editor or motion graphics application. Now, what do you do if you want to work with a vector file? Well, it's a lot easier in fact. Let's go ahead and close this document out and I'm going to make a new document by choosing File New 
and we'll build this to HD size. So let's go with film and video and we'll choose to build this, in this case, to the HDV spec for 720p. And I'll click OK. The new document is added and we simply need to add the logo in by choosing File Place. This is the easiest way to add a vector logo. So I get to the file and I'll just go ahead and select that EPS and click Place and it's added in. Now you're not seeing it because it's a white logo on a white background. So let's hit Escape and make that easier. Remember that shortcut we used earlier, Command-I? It'll invert your white to a black background. We'll go back to File Place and grab that EPS file and click Place and it's added in. Now right now this file is completely vector so if we want to scale this up we could hold down the Shift key and drag and it will scale up proportionately. Click OK and it's added. When you place a vector object, it comes in as a smart object, and that has a lot of benefits. For example, if we were to scale this down really small, and we, kick, and we click Apply, it's really tiny. But unlike a raster object, we could change our mind and scale this back up, and because the smart object contains all the vector details, it redraws perfectly crisp. At this point, we just need an alpha channel. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this background off and now I have my logo over transparency. If I want to make that a little easier to see, I could do things like add a drop shadow so it stands out a bit from the background. Now before you add drop shadows to a logo, be sure to check if the client has a style guide. Some companies do not want to see a shadow added to their logo. Now that we've got that all set, we just need an alpha channel. I'll go ahead and click the actions palette here to open it up. And if it's not visible, I'll click here and choose the Video Actions category. And one of the first actions in there is Alpha Channel from Visible Layers. I could select it and click Play. It tells me that it's going to make an alpha channel based on what's visible, so I should disable the background. I'll click Continue, and it's done. If we look in the Channels palette, you'll see there's the embedded alpha channel. I can now just say File, Save As. And again, choose something like a Picked, TIFF, or Targa and we could write that out. No compression and do not check the Save Transparency box. There we go. Embedding transparency in logos is really quite easy when you wrap your head around alpha channels. Now I realize that for some of you, alpha channels will seem intimidating. Be sure to visit the Photoshop for Video website where you'll find lots of tutorials we've done in the past on how to make and work with alpha channels. For producing video podcasts, my name is Rich Harrington. Thanks for joining us this week. And of course, visit photoshopforvideo.com where you can subscribe for free to our weekly video podcast.